Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining and welcome back to Wall Street Silver. Our guest today is my good friend, Jeffrey Tucker, the founder and president of the Brownstone Institute and the author of The Market Loves You, Why You Should Love It Back. Welcome back, sir. That's so nice to be here. Thank you. Yeah, always a pleasure having you on, Jeffrey. So we're watching closely what's happening in the markets. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, we're in the 2024, so happy new year to you and everyone watching. Uh, what What do you think is the next move that the Federal Reserve can do? They, they've signaled that they're going to cut rates. Do you believe it? What will the market, uh, what, what will happen to the market? What do you think will happen to gold? Well, it's remarkable. I mean, I'm, I'm actually sort of bullish on financial markets right now, um, <laughs> you know, without, but <laughs> which is to say there's, which is not to say that there's any basis for it really. <laughs> but, you know, given what we've seen from Wall Street, you know, for the longest time now, uh, you know, the, the thing lives on mania and, and air. <laughs> yeah, you know? honestly. And, yeah. But there's still money to be made, of course. Uh, and my expectation is that that's going to continue for a good part of 2014. But a lot of it is based on uh, the perception that the Fed is done with its rate increases, done fighting inflation. And uh, because it won the war. And so mm -hmm. now we're going to go into an era of rate, uh, you know, cutting, which, you know, it feels in many ways like 1976 all over again. Uh, you know, this is a, a very interesting period in which we had a very high inflation. It's quite high. Uh, 1973, 74, 75. And, you know, to the point we had price and wage controls. You, you recall getting off the gold standard did not achieve what <laughs> what they promised. Uh, it led to a massive inflation. And and then the Fed raised rates and and the inflation started coming down and, you know, died, died back and the Fed proclaimed victory. You know, we won, we won and started <laughs> cutting rates in advance of the election. Of course, uh, the Fed is a highly political organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, the idea was was to um, uh, you know, get 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 Carter in basically, and um, and then and then that those rate cuts, you know, rekindled inflation all over again, and it was worse than it was before. Jeez. So I mean, it was a disastrous monetary policy, and it's and it's very strange to me that the Fed doesn't pay any attention to this history, as if it's you know it happened. You know, uh, it's as relevant to the Fed as the War of the Roses or something. I mean, they just don't <laughs> they just don't care. Um, so now you've got the Fed signaling that they're going to be cutting rates, what do you know, in advance <laughs> of another election, right? There's a political business cycle as well as an economic business cycle. Right. And it's, it's, it strikes me as extremely dangerous if, if they go through with it. The other thing is that it's not really justified. I mean, the most recent figures we have on consumer price on the consumer price index, if you can even trust them at all, which I'm starting to seriously doubt. Absolutely. Um, yeah, given given the very low reporting levels that were documented by the Wall Street Journal the other day in a very alarming article by Josh Zumbrin, uh, pointed out that you know that reporting levels for all economic data is down from you know the ninety percent and eighty percent down to you know forty percent and thirty percent. Uh, so the businesses and institutions are calling to report how many jobs are available, how many how inventories, what a price is looking like. Uh, they're just not answering the phone. And and yeah. so the statistical gathering techniques have really uh, collapsed to the point that, and he's he's a columnist that writes exclusively on data. And, and he says at the end, uh, despite my severe criticisms, I'm not going to give up my column. Uh, well, that was an interesting <laughs> comment. So he was actually considering like resigning his position because you can't wow. trust the data. Therefore, there's nothing to write about. And also, I'm not sure what it means to say your criticisms are fairly severe. It sounds like he wrote severe and then thought severe is too severe and just added the word <laughs> fairly. Uh, but but in any case, uh, the most recent data we have from the CPI, such as it is, shows sticky price inflation still at 5%, which is you know way above uh, the Fed's target, so I'm not sure what they mean by that. Mm -hmm. uh, the other, the other problem with inflation that everybody should have learned by now, but everybody some somehow forgets, is that there's not a single level of inflation. It's not as if prices uh, migrate up and down like the sea level. Uh, the, what what really happens is that the price pressures move from sector to sector to sector to sector. So it oh. goes from, from food to energy. The housing, and when one sector's up, the other sector's down, and just migrates around all over the place. And and <clears throat> recall too that this current bout of inflation began in in financial markets. 
Mm-hmm. So, you know, it wouldn't surprise me to see it end in financial markets. I mean, rising financial markets can also just be a sign of of of, of inflationary pressure uh, too. So that may be where it's headed. I mean, there's no question that the rate of inflation has calmed down in its rate of increases, but it's nowhere near uh, uh, being at the Fed's target. And uh, and 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 to say nothing of you know you know, threats of deflation, which we're starting to hear about that now too. So it's just the whole thing yeah. is just crazy. I mean, the public rhetoric has nothing to do with reality on the ground. So will the Fed do it? Well, I would <laughs> say it depends on things like GDP data and whether they can continue to um, uh, broadcast out the appearance of, right. a, of, a, of prosperity and the sound economy in advance of the election for election purposes. So they can say that Biden's doing a great job and he should be reelected. Mm-hmm. Um, and if if that is not happening, then they may play with some rate cuts just to jazz up Wall Street even more uh, going into November. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Absolutely, Jeffrey. And you see now, like if we're comparing it now back to the 70s and what happened when they cut rates uh, too early and then inflation went back up. Let's say that scenario plays out again. They cut rates 2024. Inflation starts going up worse than before. What what, what happened in the 70s with gold and, and silver when that happened? Uh, do you think something similar can happen again? If Well, what's remarkable is we're starting to see that, you know, already uh, right. uh, playing out. I mean, you, you've got at the one hand, you know, a, a kind of a renewed mania on Wall Street. But on the other hand, these um, these these other uh, sources of 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 safety uh, seem to have been jazzed up uh, too. Right. And so, you know, as as we move into uh, throughout the rest of the year and 20, 25 and 26, we're going to see ever more interest in in all these safe haven, you know, assets. Um, I don't think there's any question about that. I mean, you're seeing some wild predictions for gold, silver, and Bitcoin, which are the three, right. you know, sort of main um, things that that people look at, um, and and especially, um, I I'm pretty sure that we're going to start seeing some pretty extreme moves, especially if Biden's reelected, uh, towards a central bank a digital currencies and you're starting to see already in the new york times which is sort of the bellwether uh publication you know right. they're warming up the readership uh towards this with ever more articles on 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 bank verifications and uh, the problems with uh with banks you know just deleting people's accounts they're running articles on this you know about every week which really what they're, they're writing articles on banks deleting yeah. accounts and stuff yeah uh just locking people out of accounts and hmm. and as, as the new york times you know helpfully puts it you know this is not just the hoi polloi <laughs> they're <laughs> fancy people uh that are getting suddenly locked out of their accounts without any um explanation uh, where you're just Weird. going on with your, your life and you suddenly get an email that says your account is being closed and your balance is being sent to you in the mail and a form well, of a check. What do you think that would uh, do to society, Jeffrey, if let's say we all woke up tomorrow and uh, there was cyber attacks across North America and everyone woke up <clears throat> to zero dollars? What do you think would happen? Well, that was a pretty extreme scenario. I mean, what what I, I'm not even sure, but that's, it's possible, but, yeah. but, you know, the kind of things that New York Times is writing about right now is just routine uh, shutting of accounts by major banks. Right. And these are algorithms doing it in response to what they see as perceived threats. So, you know, you might be moving some cash out, you know, pulling some cash out or putting, moving some cash in or getting a deposit from some foreign bank they don't recognize, or maybe you used a, 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 a business account to, to buy crypto right. or something, it just Anything can trigger this stuff, and anything or nothing. And or even a bank run. A bank run could trigger the banks just saying closing oh, down accounts. Sure. Oh, sure, but in that case, they're not likely to be sending you your balance. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's but true. but it's very yeah. awkward situation. So you see what's happening here. Um, it, so the New York Times is like warning everybody that your account could be closed. And and what they're calling for is some kind of new system of of uh, verification, so that you know that you have to jump through a series of regulatory hoops 
to get your account secured, same as getting a verified account on X or Facebook or something like that. Like a so, social credit score, you got to get verified. Yes, it's, it's the beginning of something like that. And wow. well, do you want you do you want your bank suddenly to lock out your funds and delete? All I, your I don't. I don't want my bank looking at my tweets and being like, oh, yeah. Well, so the idea is that is that you know you enter into a new verif bank verification systems which will be national and every bank adopts it because their customers are demanding it and then you get a you become a verified bank bank customer according to some centralized system and wow. therefore the, the so the problems will be you won't be randomly shut down uh, shut out of your account so we're going to be seeing more pressures along these lines over the coming year where there are more and more stories of people just being locked out of their banks this is all to warm us up for a new a new system of, well, the, of centralized bank verification right. account systems. So I just wanted to let everyone know about our new sponsor, Strategic Wealth Preservation. They are an international precious metals dealer, and they are a secured storage provider that have headquarters in the Cayman Islands. The company owns and operates a large Class 3 UL-rated vault in the Grand Caymans, and they offer other strategic locations as part of its global storage network. They specialize in the acquisition, secure storage, and liquidation of precious metals for individuals, companies, trusts, and wealth management professionals on behalf of their clients. So if you guys want to check them out, the link is in the description below. Well, there was a story, I think, in uh, in Europe. I don't know if it was London or some somewhere in Europe where their politician got his, uh, his bank closed. And yeah. that was due to his political views. I don't know if he was. I think he was a. I think he was more leaning towards uh, the right, so he was a Republican. But mm -hmm. in 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 Europe, but he was. Uh, he got his bank shut down just because of his sure. political views. Um, yeah. So uh, and that was twenty twenty three. So you yeah. never know what will happen. Oh, it's you... it's intensifying. Uh, and really, governments have learned, and governments and all the connected corporate interests have learned that it's a lot easier to control the population through financial controls than it is yeah. through pure outright coercion. So right. uh, we're going to see this creeping in more and more. And, and in ways that we're not going to, that political activists are not going to be able to recognize. Like, I don't think uh, there's going to be a movement to stop this, this sort of new uh, verification system for account holders. That's going to be centralized and managed by the U S treasury department. I don't think anybody's really prepared to even know that's a threat at all. They're do you think, think people oh, are too towards safety? Right. Do you think people are too distracted or divided by daily, um, whether it's entertainment or financial burdens that they would never focus, even if it were to come, like let's say a, a digital currency, a worldwide uh, digital currency or bank regulated one that will track you or just like what you were saying um, and people wouldn't even notice. Do you think people are too distracted in their daily lives today to even no notice what's going on behind Well, the everybody's these days uh, financially just scrambling uh, right. just to stay alive, which which tends to make people more politically compliant. I mean, mm. this is this is what's going on. I mean, people have really stopped worrying about changing the world and just trying to figure out how to pay the bills month to month. I mean, this is that wow. you know, so the the population is ever more dependent and being financially uh, squeezed. I mean, savings rates, despite high interest rates, have not recovered uh, substantially at all. They've not moved uh, anywhere near like what we want, and you know, half Americans or more are living paycheck to, to paycheck, and. Um, the financial squeeze is on. I mean, the consumer spending is still high, but I th it seems to me a little bit irrational. I mean, like people really stopped managing their personal finances because they think algorithms are going to do it for them. And they don't balance <laughs> their check checkbooks anymore. They don't even look at prices. No, Actually, true. I've wondered if this is a major reason for uh, for the for the firming up of, of of retail spending is just the you know the prevalence of of um, you know, uh, barcodes and, you know, Apple Pay and then, you know, just uh, the the cards. Oh, they is, don't even notice it because the convenience is so good. They just swipe and so boom. Good. It's like, yeah. okay, n now touch your card here and you touch the yeah, card yeah. and, and you know, that's the end. I mean, how many people are even looking at receipts anymore? It's, and the money just sort of magically goes in the account and then it magically comes out of the account. And heretofore, everything has always worked. Why, people have not been trained 
even to watch uh, money flows. At, That's why uh, cash was a lot different. You could, you know, count yeah. and you going in and out of your pocket. You got to yeah. physically feel that money go out of your pocket, not That's just right. by a tap. Yeah, yeah it makes sense. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so now the tap just sort of wipes out even the, you know people's cognitive awareness of what's going on around them. I, by the way, I've never heard anybody write about this or talk about this, but I've suspected yeah, yeah. this. Yeah, no, it's it's time. it totally makes sense. The convenience would make someone not financially mm -hmm. literate because they would just tap away better oh, yeah. instead of counting their actual physical dollars yeah no i mean you go to the grocery store you pile stuff in your in your cart you stand in the lines they run it over some magic you know mirror thing and then <laughs> say tap your card and you tap it and you, you know they shove you out and you're out the door and that's it and you're maybe you, you get to the car and you think god dude, I, I can't believe i just spent 150 dollars like, oh okay well yeah, yeah that's yeah. it yeah, but then, the money, you know, comes into the accounts, it goes out of the accounts, and everybody thinks it happens by magic. And and it's been that way for a very long time now. So people are just really not even trained to you know, for budgets or they're not looking at their credit cards. I mean, how many people even know that, you know, typical credit cards are now, and and by the way, we are way past a trillion dollars in credit card debt. I mean, it's it's just gone crazy. Yeah, it's nuts. And the revolving accounts are 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 frequently used by two thirds of credit card holders now, and these rates are running twenty percent and higher uh, on credit cards, and people just don't even notice. I mean, it's just this wicked. It's a it, it's a wicked system of financial expectation that people are, are just not even aware of. They don't even know they should be aware of it until yeah. it's too late, you know. And until the veal is lifted, and right. we, didn't, we didn't even talk about unrealized losses for banks. And oh my goodness, <laughs> it's yeah. crazy what's happening in the in the near future. But I want to thank you, Jeffrey, so much for coming down to Wall Street Silver, and everyone watching. Thank you so much. Uh, where can people contact you, Jeffrey? Uh, I'm at brownstone.org. I write uh, more and more these days at brownstone.org, but also every day at the Epoch Times. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much, Jeffrey, and I'd love to have you back on soon. Okay. Thanks so much. All Thanks. the best. <laughs>